Our homes are literally falling into the sea. You know, climate change to us isn't just a word. It's a reality. It's what we live with every single day. The Arctic and the Antarctic are indeed the air conditioners of the world. And if you don't have those air conditioners, what does that mean? At least 40 or 50 years ago, our communities were talking about climate change. They did not use those words. We're seeing temperatures unlike anything we've seen before. It's getting into the hundreds. That truthfully never used to happen before. I'll start first with my traditional uh, introduction because that's the way we do things in our world. I am an Inupiaq, an Alaska native, born and raised in Nome. My mother is Frances Longley. My father is Orville Cochran. My ancestors come from Nome, from King Island, and from Wales, all communities in Northern Alaska. I'm also the director of the Alaska Native Science Commission. I also was associated with the Arctic Council and the United Nations. You now, most of our villages were built on permafrost. And now with that gone, that's a huge problem. If someone came to you and said that you had to move your community, what would you do? How would you respond? Well, we're in that position now. Our buildings, our homes are literally falling into the sea. The places where many of us grew up, myself included, are along the coastlines, where the sea ice that used to be there is no longer there. So that means that every storm, all of the wind conditions that push those storms, are impacting and eroding the shores, the beaches, the homes of our communities. We grew up in our camps where we learned to live very, very closely tied to the land. That was what sustained us. I tell people, you know, our Safeway store is right outside your front door. That's where we go shopping. That's still our primary area of, gather, of food gathering. The food security issues have certainly changed a lot. 40 or 50 years ago was sort of the first indicators when people in our communities were talking about their ice cellars melting. Ice cellars is where we would traditionally store our traditional foods. They would go underground. And those were the refrigerators that we had. The ice cellars were a critical part of keeping our food safe because when they melt, obviously the, all of the things that you have stored there become unusable. With the rain that we're seeing now, again, very unusual. Well, one of the things that we all do is to dry our fish. We hang it up on fish racks. Well, if it's so rainy, all of the fish cannot dry properly. Seasons changing, berry picking seasons. Everything is coming two or three three weeks earlier than it did before. The fish not being able to run up streams because of the water levels changing in the rivers. The cold water is no longer there to support the cold water fish that we rely upon. The ocean acidification is changing the shells of the crabs. PSP, paralytic shellfish poisoning. Again, food sources that we have relied upon. These are all major issues. I feel sad and somewhat guilty about the world that we're leaving to the generations behind. It bothers me that my grandchildren are the ones that have to live in this world that, that we're leaving. But I'm going to do my part to make sure that I leave the information behind. We are the ones who are most closely tied to the land. We see the most subtle changes because we live there. We say that we are the harbinger of what is to come for the rest of this planet. The changes in the, the Arctic free ice conditions, that's a huge issue that people just don't recognize what that is going to mean to everyone around the world. Because we're talking about pouring out millions and millions of gallons of water all around the world, raising the sea levels everywhere. People all along the Gulf Coast California, Florida, Manhattan, they should be worried. So I hope people will learn. I hope they will hear us. I hope these lessons will be helpful. So this is what I would say as, as an elder in my community. We live in a very different time right now. Coronavirus has had a huge impact on the world. There's no question also that it has given us an opportunity. It's given our Mother Earth an opportunity to take a deep and cleansing breath one of the first in a very long time. And it's up to us as a people of this world to really take hold of that opportunity, to reset our priorities, to refocus our values, to remember that we're all in this as one planet and to make sure that we keep our Mother Earth healthy. We are all living on one planet. We have one planet 
and we're all one people. I'm very happy to include Patricia Cochran in the book that I wrote of my heroes. If you want to read more about her and indeed other stories, please read my book, Climate Justice, 